I've been making videos now for almost a year and I've had several requests to do a tour of my darkroom. So I thought I would go ahead and show you just what it is that I work in. I'll do a studio tour another day. Right now you're looking at the dry side of my darkroom. The door is right off camera there and it's just a pocket door that I've sealed uh, with a little bit of extra trim and then a gasket on the bottom of the door so it just slides and closes. Up here at the top I've got a roll film holder or roll paper holder. It keeps the paper in the dark. It is light tight and then I tell it how long of a piece I want and how many pieces I want and it will spit it out and cut it off for me. It's very convenient um, but they're they're hard to find and they don't make them anymore so parts are hard to find. Here I've got just all my negatives to print from, uh, just on this shelf. I've got a daylight balanced color print inspection light hanging on the bottom of the shelf. Uh, some outlets here and a countertop. Now the room is only six feet wide. Uh, so the sink is a little over two feet. Kitchen cabinets are two feet, and then that would give me less than two feet to walk in in between. So I put in at kitchen counter height, a kitchen cabinet, uh, the upper part. So it's only about a foot deep. So it still gives me plenty of room to walk in, but I've got storage for my bottles and just a piece of MDF for the countertop. I was fortunate in that I could custom make my dark room because it was an unfinished storage room when we bought this house. So I could put in all the outlets I wanted before putting in the sheetrock. So I put some outlets here up on top and I've got some in the cabinet. Uh, and then just some extra shelves. Um, these paper safes, I've got a small one here, big one here. And then I've got a rack to store all of my enlarging lenses. Uh, that then takes me to the other end of the room for the enlarger. The enlarger that I use is, as it says, DeVere 5108. It's an 8x10 enlarger that I bought on eBay uh, years ago when I was down in Miami. There was one listed up in Orlando, so I made the drive, went up there and got it. It was only a, I want to say three or four hundred dollars. So that was what, nine or ten years ago when the prices bottomed out. They've now gone back up. Is the only enlarger I have. It's big, as you can see, it's a floor standing model and it takes up the whole back corner of the room. Does not give me room for a second smaller enlarger, so this one does all the sizes that I need from 35 millimeter up to 8x10 film. But since I'm mostly just a sheet film shooter anyway, um, I rarely print smaller than 4x5, so it, it does pretty well for me. <clears throat> but it's a color head. Um, and then it'll project, the, the table drops down so I can project up to 30 by 40 inch prints. Uh, you'll see that I painted that section black. That's to minimize reflections when I'm printing. The rest of the room is a tan. Uh, I, I hate white walls, so I didn't paint the room white. Uh, I've worked in a black dark room before, uh, back when I was a pro printer. Um, I find it very claustrophobic. I'm not going to paint the whole room that way, just the section I need. And there was one lab I worked in where the owner got the bright idea to paint the walls bright yellow to maximize safe light uh, um, energy. And it just about drove me insane when I had to turn the lights on. So I figured a tan would be pleasant to work in when the lights are on, but also work pretty well with the safe light. I wasn't too thrilled about painting the ceiling white because I've got this angled part of the ceiling and I never know what to do with that. Do you paint it like the ceiling? Do you paint it like the wall? So I just painted the ceiling and everything the same tan color. I don't know. I'll just let the next homeowner deal with that. They're just going to have a tan ceiling. So. Let me show you the wet side. Down here at the end, I have a Jobo uh, CPA2, uh, also another eBay purchase. Most of my big equipment is eBay because people are just dumping it for really cheap. 
<clears throat> enlarger, the paper holder, Jobo, uh, drum scanner, all that sort of stuff. So I've got this, uh, the drums are behind it, and then underneath is some storage for larger drums. I've got shelves all the way across. These are stainless steel, they're rods, uh, so things can drip down through to dry. And they're just Ikea, just bought them there. This cable, uh, which you may not be able to see uh, very well, is also Ikea. Um, I think it's supposed to be like a laundry cable or something like that, but it works really well to hang film from as well. Got my stereo, you can see the speaker on the wall. Got a stereo uh, unit, plug in my phone, go from there. <clears throat> Healthy supply of gloves. These are my premixed chemicals. My liquid chemicals are in the cabinet on the dry side. Uh, and then I'll show you where I keep my dry chemicals in a moment. Got my timer, got another timer I'm trying to fix. And then my containers. Here I've got a stainless steel sink. It's a seven foot long, 26 inch wide and um, a backsplash. The backsplash is just a sheet of stainless that I had a local sheet metal shop bend for me and it's just on a plywood uh, base. The sink pan itself I bought from Rosie Products and I would have preferred an eight foot sink but he told me that seven feet is the longest he'll make from a single sheet of steel. If I wanted longer than that, it'd be a lot more expensive because you'd have to put two sheets together and weld them. So I ended up with a seven foot sink, but it works okay. I can do 16 by 20 in here pretty easily. The cabinets are just Lowe's, um, red oak. I didn't stain them or anything like that. They're just uh, the cheapest wood cabinet you can get from Lowe's. So this is a double cabinet and I keep um, just large storage containers and whatnot that are spare anything just to get out of the way. This is just a one foot cabinet. There's some spare measuring cups in here and then the plumbing, the drain for the sink is in there. Then in the center, I've got my drying racks. I've got a uh, tray storage and that's really about it. A, um, a really nice feature is the uh, floor mat, anti-fatigue floor mat. Get one of those if you have a hard floor. This is a fake hardwood vinyl, not vinyl, uh, press board click together floor. That way if I spill something, I'm not ruining something good, but it does get tough on the feet. So get a anti-fatigue mat. And then at the very end of the sink, it's only about, I don't know, 15 inches from the end of the sink to the wall. And there I've got a couple of smaller print and film washers. And then the very floor is my air conditioner vent, so I don't cover that up. Then finally, there's a shelf at the end of the sink where I have my 16 by 20 print washer. Uh, I need to make a pan for it because it doesn't drain directly into the sink. It's not a out of the sink model. It's supposed to be in the sink, so I have to move it to wash prints and then put it back once I drain it. It's a pain, so I'm gonna make a pan one day, put that in. Up here, way up, up above the door, because that's where I've got room, is another cheap Lowe's cabinet, and inside are my dry chemicals to keep that up away from my two kids. The pocket door, most pocket doors, they have a lock on the inside, they don't have a lock on the outside, so <clears throat> I, uh, found online and had shipped from Australia, because that's the only place I could find it, was a pocket door lock that actually had a keyed entry so that I could keep the kids out. So if you use a pocket door and you have kids, look for one of those online. Um, I couldn't find anything in the US, just Australia. So do some internet searching and you can find it. There's nothing else in here other than a trash can and um, I guess I do have a, a light switch up here I didn't mention before. This is, uh, this is the light switch for the room. This is the light switch for the safe light. And since I was able to custom make this room, I put an outlet on the ceiling for the safe light because the safe light only has a cable like that long. So put a separate switch so that I wouldn't accidentally hit one or the other. I know which one's which. 
and that turns that on. Other than that, that should be the whole dark room. It's not very big. I can almost touch both walls. Being five foot nine, I'm almost there, but a foot away. And then 12 feet long, I could cross it in four or five steps if I wanted to. It's not very big, but it doesn't have to be big. It just has to be efficient. So if you're making your own dark room, consider the space that you have, consider the stuff that you need. If you have too much stuff, start paring it down. If you need more space, think about how you can maximize things like mounting up on the wall, uh, cabinet storage, shelf storage, and really kind of economize what you have. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick little tour of my darkroom. Get out there, start making some prints, and please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel.